Hello, hello. If you own a company or work for a company that has a website, which is, let's be honest, 99% of you watching out there right now, it's general best practice to look at the page speed of your website. If it's slow or fast, Google has a website and also an API to get this data. So in an ideal case, you would query this API once a day, once a week, once a month to compare how good your page is and also to monitor this. In an ideal case, you also would monitor the competition to see how they how they are doing. So what we are going to do is we write a little Python proof of concept to query the API and get all relevant metrics. The API has a lot more to offer than just the page speed. But before we dive deeper into the topic, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully there's more cool content coming all about business intelligence. So let's dive deeper into it. Most of the time, Google has some nice tutorials on how to do things. And since this is quite often changing, we can as well just type in Google PageSpeed API into Google and see what comes up. In this case, there's this get started with PageSpeed Insights, uh, which we are directly going into. And then you can see already how to do things. So first of all, we click dismiss here. And then there is a section on acquiring API keys. So for this part, we just say we go to the credentials page. And if we go to the credentials page, uh, we are getting redirected to Google Cloud. If you don't have an account yet, then uh, I'm not going to show you how to do an account. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. You don't even need credit card information because the API is uh, freely accessible. The pro tip here is that if you work for a company and uh, you have an IT team and the IT team is already using, for example, a Google login for the web application or for the application or is using Firebase, then they definitely have an account already. In this case, you can just ask them, ask them for like the permission, giving you access to this. Uh, most of the time, like uh, the IT is not very like good on Google Cloud. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> you can tell me in the comments why they are not. Most of the time, they are really good in AWS, but uh, the Google Cloud is sort of like an unknown for them. Anyways, in this case, we just create an API key. We just say in this case, we say create credentials. We would like to use an API key, and now an API key is created. And I don't know why this takes so long, but it should be there relatively fast. So that's our API key. Uh, you copy this, you save this so that we can go into the next step, which is unfortunately enabling the API through the Google Cloud Console if it's not done yet. Which means that in this case, we just type in the search bar, we say Google Page Speed API, and hopefully Google is smart enough to find this, and it is. I just click on the Page Speed API, and now I have to say, now I have to say enable, and if I click on enable, Google is loading, and then telling me hopefully that everything works fine. We just wait this five seconds. I'm getting redirected. Now this API is enabled. So in a nutshell, we've activated the Google Cloud API, and we also got an API key. We are now able to do everything we like to do because uh, that's actually the main part of the video. So let's go for it. The first thing we are going to do is we import the request library because we have to make an, a request call, an API call. If you don't have installed a request, then pip install request is still your best friend, which means that in the next case we do need an URL. And of course, I haven't shown you how to get the URL, so how do we get the URL? We are back to the documentation, and you can see here there's an example curl command which has the endpoint. In this case, some URL parameters, but in this case, we are just interested in the endpoint. We copy the endpoint and put them into our memory so that we can put this into our script. I already pasted the, the URL into our script. So what we need to do is, of course, we do a get request to this URL and the URL normally needs like parameters in this case, because otherwise Google doesn't know anything what I want to do. And so let's say I do need a param stick. And in this case, the param stick has a couple of key uh, key parameters, which is first of all the URL. So which URL do you want to query? Then there is the strategy, strategy, which can be either mobile or desktop. In this case, we go for mobile. And then there's the category. And the category is quite interesting because the category by default is just performance, which means like how fast is your website loading. But you can also get something like SEO, you can get something like accessibility, and I will probably write this wrongly. And we can get two other. The two other I will write in a second as well, which means that now we could technically do our get request, which is like get request get. I would say URL, and then I would say params. The way how to get these categories 
is defined in a Google, in a, also in a Google tutorial. And the thing is, we will be looking at this in a second. I just want to finish this off by saying this time, let's go for Amazon.com to see how they are performing. So let's quickly go back to the to the website and see what other categories. In order to get the categories, uh, we are back to our initial get started page and we just try to model through here. So the first thing is we are going through the API Explorer because the API Explorer normally has something for us and it has something for us. So it has the endpoint here, this run page speed. And if I click on this, I can see all the different things I can enter. In this case, of course, we have the URL already. We have the category is something that we are looking for right now. There's local, doesn't really matter much in, in normal cases in the strategy. We've spoken about this is either desktop or mobile, UDM campaign, UDM source. And with this in mind, we go back to our script. So we need to remember best practices and PWA, which is progressive web app. So we say best practices and PWA. And the cool part is we can write it like this in an array because Google will understand this. And of course, we, I forgot here uh, to say params, not params equals params, just to be sure. And now we can make a request. And in this case, we will just do print debug. Print debug because what we are going to do is we are going to stop here. And just to be extra safe, because PySham or sometimes does this to me, it's like we write debug two, and we t set two breakpoints, and we do this, and we say debug, and now we can look at the payload. So if everything goes right, I can say res, and I get a 429 because we have forgotten something very essential, which is the API token. So let's go for the API token and see how we can enter this. Again, we are back at the script and now we have to enter the API key. In this case, we just say key and we copy this, what I have already in my in my clipboard. And I also saw that accessibility is the wrong accessibility. And let's see how we can do now. So if I do the debugging and hopefully I can see something here. It's good because it's loading already, which means that the page view or the page analysis is right now running. And in a couple of seconds, we should get to our debug breakpoint. And hopefully this happens in a second as well. So the cool part here is that, of course, we can ask for mobile, we can ask for desktop. And in a second, you will also see that we are able to get all the scores. Right, so all the relevant scores. In this case, rest JSON. If I do the rest JSON, you will see there is a lot in there. So let's scroll up and this is still, I'm still scrolling up, scrolling and make it faster. There's a lot of information in here, which can be overwhelming. And in our part, like we are most interested in the core KPIs and the core KPIs are in the rest JSON. Um, we would go for Lighthouse Results. I think just Lighthouse Result and this works. And then we go for Categories category still works and now we can go for all our categories right so there's one performance uh, which we can go for performance performance and you see like is there's still a lot of information in it it's not as much anymore but in this case uh, I went on the route already on the route already and now we go into the score so now we have the score which is like 68 and of course, in order to have the score properly, you would say one times 100. And now we know the score is 68, surprisingly 68 out of 100. We can do the same with all the other categories. So if I, instead of performance, so as I have defined here, I can do SEO, I can, I can do accessibility, I can do best practices, I can do PVA. So for example, if I go now for SEO, I get the SEO score. If I go now for, let's go for best practices, I get the best practices score and this I can do with everything and ideally of course I do this every day I save this in the database I do my analysis I basically run over this every every day every week to see if something is better or worse which is quite nice and this is also part of a professional BI department to monitor these kind of KPIs so that we know if something gets better or worse because sometimes we also have to monitor the IT. With that being said, leave a thumbs up if this is something new to you. Uh, write down something in the comments if you like. Um, please subscribe to the channel because there's something cool coming. Um, so thank you very much. See you soon.